Hey guys, I'm Gamer Mate. Welcome back to a new video. So I'm here back inside Roblox Studio. In today's video, I'm going to be showing how to make a variant story game part 4. So we're going to be making a transition and teleports. Okay, so first we make a transition by going to start a GUI, click plus, then add in a screen GUI, then in properties, name it to transition GUI. And inside of that, click plus, then add in a frame. Now we can change colour to black. Then if you change the size to 1, comma 0, comma 0, comma 0. Then we can just make sure visible is unticked. Once we've got that, go to our replicate storage. Then remote events. Then GUI events. Then add in a remote event. Then name it to transition event. Like that. Now if we go back inside of start GUI, then inside the scripts, then add in a local script and name it to transition script. So if we make a variable for a player, so local player equals game dot players dot local player. Then if we make a variable for the remote event, so local transition event equals game dot replicate storage dot remote events dot GUI events dot transition event. Now if we make a variable for a frame, so local frame equals player dot player gy colon wait for child bracket speech marks then transition gy that's our brackets type in dot frame then if we go down and type in transition event dot on client event colon connect two brackets and then function then if you type in frame dot visible equals to true then frame colon tween size brackets then u dim 2 dot new two brackets then 1 comma 0 comma 1 comma 0 in between brackets do a comma then speech marks then out then comma and then speech marks and then sign, then comma, and then one. Then if we add in a wait, so if we wait four seconds, then we do the same thing, so if we copy paste it, we then change this one to a zero. So what we're doing is getting variables for a player, transition event, and then frame. Then once the transition event has been fired to all the clients, we're going to make the frame visible. Then we're going to tween size so it fills the entire screen. Then after four seconds, we're going to tween it so then it like goes up, if that makes sense. Now we've closed out the script. And to make it work, if we go inside the main script, underneath this timer event, if we make a variable for a transition, so local transition event equals game dot replicate storage dot remote events dot gy events dot transition event and to make it work we scroll down and underneath this part 2 function I'm going to be making a part 3 so local function part 3 then brackets and to run this function if we go down underneath this part 2 then do part three, two brackets. Then we could just write a comment. So to make the transition work, we need to type in transition event, colon, fire all clients, then two brackets, then it should work. Okay, so before we make the, um, the teleport, 
I'm going to write some dialogue. Okay, so I just made some variables and some dialogue. So what I want to happen is after they've found the apples, they transitions and it's night time. Then I want some like lightning to like hit the cabin. So then we have to find shelter. So I didn't show you how to make this because you need to make your own objectives instead of just like copying mine. So yeah, instead of doing this, just make up your own objectives. But anyway, so we get some variables, then we transition. Also, between every transition, if you want something to happen, make sure you do a wait too. Because if transition is four seconds, then it'll have to be two seconds to actually make anything happen so you don't see it, if that makes sense. So then we set the rain to the workspace, and then change the time of day to I think for like 1am. Then we make the NPC so it's raining, then make him walk to another walk to point, which if you saw the last few episodes you'll know how to do that. Then we set the lightning so it's parent to a workspace. I also have a colour correction which I'm changing the brightness and contrast to make it look like the lightning. Then we destroy it, then make the cabin set on fire, then we get a random player to speak, and then we toggle the dialogue and objective. Then set the objective to say find shelter. I'm also going to be making a trigger so we can toggle more dialogue. So to do that, we've closed the script, then add in a part. So this is going to be our trigger part. So we put it over to the cave, then change the size. So make sure it's anchored. And then change the transparency to 1. Also, make sure can collide is off. Then we can change the name. Do something like found cave trigger. And inside of it, add in a script. And to check if the trigger has been touched, we're going to destroy it. So then in the main script, we'll see if it's been destroyed. And if it has, then it'll make more dialogue play. So we've made a touched event. So script.parent.touched colon connect two brackets function two more brackets and then hit then if hit dot parent colon find first child then humanoid then script dot parent colon destroy two brackets then close it off I want you to do now is inside replicate storage, add in a folder, then name it to triggers, then drag that trigger part inside the folder, then back inside the main script. If you make a variable for the triggers, so underneath these objectives, if you make a variable for triggers equals to game. Dot replicate storage. Then dot triggers. Then you scroll down. So we've typed in triggers. Dot found cave trigger. Dot parent equals game. Dot workspace. And now we're going to be using a repeat wait until. So repeat wait. And then on the until. If do game dot workspace colon find first child and then the name of your trigger outside of brackets type in equals equals to nil then we can say some more dialogue for now we're going to be making the teleport so to do that close the script then the workspace add in a folder then name it to teleport points. Then if you add in a part and make sure it's anchored, this is going to be where we teleport to. So if we resize it, then put this wherever you want the play to teleport to. So I'm just going to quickly build a cave. Okay, so here's the cave. In this first area, this is where we're going to be teleporting to. So you can see there's two ways 
through here, then this is where the NPC is going to go. Then through here, there's an obby, which we'll be doing later, or in a later episode. Then through here, we're going to be having like an NPC that chases you and then kills you. Then through here, we have a maze. Then at the end, this is going to be where the ending is. Anyway, if we get that part, and then put it in the cave, and then position it. Like this. Then make sure transparency is set to 1. So we can also name it, so like cave, teleport. Then make sure can collide is off. Then drag that inside the teleport's points folder. Now inside the main script, we're going to be making a teleport function. So underneath these um, random players, if we go down, then make a comment. And this is where we're going to be having all the functions. So like for teleport, then music and sound. So first off, if you make a function by typing local function, then teleport, two brackets, then between brackets, if you type in teleport position, because this is going to be where we're teleporting the place to. Then if you type in for i, comma players, in pairs, brackets, then game, dot players, colon get players. That's our brackets, type in do, then type in player or players dot character, colon find first child, then humanoid root part. That's our brackets, type in dot C frame, then equals to teleport position. So what we're doing is making a function called teleport, then this between brackets is going to be where we teleport and players to. Then this for icon or players in pairs is all the players in the game. Then we're getting the player's character, which is their actual player in the game. Then we've then we're using find first child for their humanoid root part. Then we're setting the humanoid root part C frame, which is kind of like the position to the teleport position. So now to see if it works, if we go down to our function part 3. So underneath this transition, remember to add in the weight 2. So teleport, 2 brackets, then teleport points. Oh no, we didn't make a variable, did we? Okay, so at the top, if we make a variable for teleport points. So underneath triggers, type in local, teleport, points, equals game, dot workspace, dot teleport points. Then scroll down. Then in between brackets of the teleport function, type in teleport points. Then the name of your teleport point. So cave teleport dot C frame. And then this should work. Before we test it, we're going to also teleport the NPC. So type in NPC model colon set primary part C frame, then two brackets, then teleport points, dot cave teleport, dot C frame, then it should work. Also, I'm just going to set the time of day back to daytime so it's not as dark. There we go, now if I click play. Also, the, um, the rain is a particle. So I'll just show you that. So you can see that the rain is a particle like this. Then the fire is just a fire. Then the lightning is parts set to neon. So it looks like lightning. So if we put these back and click play. So after this it should transition. Also teleport once we find the cave. There you go. We also forgot to um do this, but I'll show you how to fix that. 
There you go, it's raining, we should go back to the cabin. So it walks over. Let's see if lightning works. There you go, you see it works. Then the lightning sets the cabin on fire. Also, later on, we're going to be adding some sound effects and some music. But anyway, it says we need to find shelter, so we'll go to a cave. There you go, we touch trigger, and then she'll teleport. There you go, we can see we teleported, and also the NPC did. If we click stop, go to the transition GUI, then make sure ignore GUI inset is ticked. And that should get rid of the weird bar up top. But guys, that's going to be it for this video. If this video helped, make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe down below. In the description, check my Roblox group and Discord server. And I'll see you later. Bye!